Hello! Welcome to Bad at Board Games. My name's Brad Lake, and I'm Bad at Board Games, so you don't have to be. Today, we're going to be talking about Wormspan. Got to play it at Tantrum Con. Got to play it with Cardboard Hunter Sterling. Um, another guy that had, like, massive amounts of board game experience and was kind of looking to get into the board game industry. Definitely well... Seem to know every game, every mechanic, everything. Played it with a, another lady that we had met, and she was big into like Wingspan, but also like all the Lacertas and the heavy games as well. And then my wife, so we played Wormspan at five players. And long story short, four out of five of us, not going to play it again. <laughs> Stick around if you're interested in it. Why? I'll try to make this short sweet. Only played it once, so take that into consideration, but don't want to play it again. So, why? Why is that? So, they, I feel like Wingspan, and I'm not a huge fan. For me, it's a, it's okay. I'll play it. I would say it's a six and a half, seven. I think it's a seven. It's a good game. I appreciate the mechanic. Um, doesn't take long to play. You know, I appreciate it. And so, it's definitely not a six or a six and a half. It's a, for me, it's a seven at best. You know, I don't love it. I'm not asking to play it, which would be, make it an eight or a nine, but I understand and I appreciate appreciate all the people who love this game you know it's a it's a it's in that arc um not arc nova <laughs> it's in that category kind of like with dune and um, lost ruins of arnak and some of those games that like have this nice niche area where it's not quite a three level weight and not a two level weight and it's a has a great broad um you know theme that attracts a lot of a lot of different people so i appreciate wingspan for that wormspan i thought was going to be my wingspan the one that i really like ah this is way better and you know it's got dragons it's got a theme i like better and it's going to be a little bit crunchier but that ended up all falling flat now one i can say five players i haven't played wingspan at five players but our game groups played it at four they've played it twice in a night so that's you know hour and a half less than an hour and a half and they're they're on to the next game right we played five players by eight to eleven we had only gone through three rounds it was long it was fiddly it was not what i wanted out of this game at all um i'd sit there and play or talk with a uh, sterling at cardboard hunter and we would just go back and forth talking about other games and his grail games and all kinds of different things equipment youtube all that fun stuff and then it'd be like our turn and i'd be like okay well i'm just gonna do something and then move on um but it's, it took forever for that to get back to me <laughs> and so it's very boring in between um definitely would say maybe it'll be better at two I'd definitely play faster and three i don't think i'd ever want to i'm well i'm not going to play it again but i'm not would never recommend this at four or five um just because it, it took so long, and Wingspan doesn't. Wingspan's not a long game. Um, to talk about a bit of the mechanics, so you're going to have six coins that you're going to get every round, and a round consists... You're, you're going to have basically six turns, typically. You're going to pay this coin to play a card of any type. You're going to pay a coin to go explore down the um, path of the, the dragon caves, and I think there's a you're going to pay a coin for something else. But for the most part, that's how you're keeping track of how many turns you have in a round. And then at the end of the round, just like Wingspan, you're going to score for who has the most types of these dragons or who has the most types of these caves, so forth and so on. After four rounds, you're done. Whoever has the most victory points, la la, yay. Um, the new mechanic or new, the most new mechanic in this game is the caves. You're going to have to put a cave piece down you're going to have to excavate before you place um, and entice a dragon to come and live in said cave and then for your explorer to be able to get the the resources that's another action so you're going to take this little meeple guy that you have and then you're going to be able to explore one of the three um, paths that are normally in wingspan would be like the marshes and the grasslands and I always forget what the other one is but you have three tracks but instead of 
you know, oh, I'm just going to like move my egg down or whatever. You're taking this little explorer guy and you can move forward as long as there's a dragon to kind of hop over. And then in between each card space, there's a resource you can get. And there's a whole nother board, which is called the Guild Board, Dragon Guild. And it has a rondelle on it. And then as you move a cube around that, you're going to get a resource or be able to move, uh, you know, get another dragon or get another cave card or some other things like that. Um, so I was, you know, I thought this was going to be, yeah, this is going to be my, my wingspan that I really like. It just didn't end up being like that. It was, it was fiddly. We kind of keep forgetting to use our coins to, you know, keep track. And that's really all it is. The coins are there to keep track of your turn. I felt like that could have been, um, done a little bit better. There's ways that you can get coins back. So it like extends your turn. So you might get a couple more turns versus the other people for a round or you may get less because sometimes you may spend two coins but it still seemed like oh yeah I gotta do this and it just you know it it was an added thing that seemed to get in the way from wingspan which was a nice and clean mechanic um placing the caves like the colors didn't matter so the caves could be any color and once you put them in the, the track that they're in, the tracks do have colors and there's a little thumb on the side of the dragon card that tells you where they can go. Kind of like, you know, wingspan, this bird can go in the grass or this one can go in the marsh. Um, but it was just a color and, you know, it says in the book, the colors don't matter. <laughs> and then there's a color dot on each track. And then there's a little half circle kind of on the side of the dragon card that tells you where those dragons can go. So that gets confusing because you're kind of looking at the color of the dragon. I don't know. It didn't have, you know, somehow it is easier to see and follow in Wingspan than it is in Wormspan. So that was annoying. Um, getting the chaining going with the caves and the dragons and then the exploration seemed, it, it's definitely harder, um, clunkier. Feels harder to get cards in the game um you're having to take an action just to get like a card and sometimes those cards may allow you to get another card but like that's not very often um and i was kind of getting those but other people weren't um it it didn't seem to synergize and what's weird is like we didn't like it and i would say like the lady that did like it she has a group of wingspan um that likes Wingspan, she plays Wingspan with. So she thought, and since she likes heavier games, she thought she's still going to get this to have a heavier version of Wingspan and hopefully they would like to play. The rest of us, the other four of us, didn't like it, didn't want to play it again. Um, it just, it didn't seem as streamlined, didn't seem, you know, as fluid. I don't know how to explain it, but it, then it was just like, it took way, way, way too long. Three hours to get through three rounds is just too much. It was just too much. And maybe we were super slow, but I, we weren't AP in it. And by like, you would think by the third turn, you know, even though this was our first time playing it, you know, we would all kind of like be, okay, doing this, doing this. And maybe you're not going fast. You're not optimizing things very well, but this, it was still, it still took forever to get back to my turn. And then, um, then we just, we kind of like this, we decided at 11 o'clock, after playing it for three hours, we're done. <laughs> I had an hour, hour and a half drive home, and I wasn't going to spend another hour to play the fourth round of the game. It was just, it was not enjoyable. Um, I enjoyed the company. Um, we all we all enjoyed that part of, of, of the gaming, so it definitely wasn't. Sometimes it's like the people you're playing with makes the game not fun. Well, this, the, the, the people hadn't have been there, <laughs> I'd have probably quit halfway through the game. <laughs> Um, but it was, it, I, I have to say I didn't enjoy it. Um, but like I said, if you kind of like the games that I like, this review may help you. Granted, it's a first impression, but it's a first impression that I can say like, I'm not going to play it again. So I don't know. There's a ton of people out there saying how much they love it. I can't say that I'm one of them. And I, I was disappointed. I really wanted to be like, this is, this is the game for me, but unfortunately it's not. Hopefully this helps you make a good decision. Maybe you'll play it before you pre-order it. Um, 
only you know what you like and uh but at the same time you might want to try it somebody else's copy before you go out and buy one so just remember no matter how you play whether it's solo with family or friends enjoy whatever you are bringing to the table have a great night